Ed? Well, an interesting development, Chris. You know, Mike Ditka's last pick as GM and head coach of the Saints was Ricky Williams. Gave away almost an entire draft to make that pick. Well, now Jim Hazlitt and Randy Mueller are going to take another running back with their very first first-round pick, and it's going to be Deuce McAllister, the multi-dimensional running back. They, I, when I talked to Mueller yesterday, he said, hey, this is a guy who reminds me a lot of Fred Taylor with that explosiveness, the ability to contribute as a receiver immediately. It also gives him a back up for Ricky Williams who missed eight games last year and I think the other thing it sends a strong message to Ricky Williams who right now is the only member of their roster who is not participating in their offseason program now they did dispatch Dave Atkins their running backs coach uh, down to San Diego last week to check in on Ricky Williams they weighed him he weighed 228 Chris let's go back to you all right, Ed, thank you very much for the insight. And if this is the case, which um, we're about to find out, uh, another team that doesn't have to pay moving expenses. Ole Miss, New Orleans, it's close. Here's the pick. With the 23rd selection, the New Orleans Saints have chosen running back from Mississippi, Deuce McAllister. Well, this is some discussion here, boys. Oh, Jim, hey, listen, Let's go. Jim Hazlitt. Since he's been in New Orleans, he's never been enamored with Ricky Williams. And, and, and there's just, it's, it's black and white with Jim Haslett. He, he either likes you or he's got issues with you. Now, hey, Ricky Williams, two straight off seasons, has barely been there with Jim Haslett. Has forfeited $250,000 each year in off-season workout bonus money. And I don't think he's Haslett's type of guy. And this, at least, you'll find out. Will he compete? Will he be motivated by getting a guy like And one McAllister? thing, too, with McAllister's pass receiving skills, Mort, you have a heck of an option. You can utilize him in a lot of different ways. He has kickoff return skills. He's an outstanding punt returner. You watch Deuce McAllister. I think the knock on his competitiveness was just not accurate. I look at Deuce McAllister, Joe, and he battled back from that injury the best he could this year. Go back to uh, 1998. He rushed for over 1,000 yards, averaged 5.1 yards per carry. Caught 20 passes out of the backfield. The next year, averaged 5.4 yards per carry. Then the injuries this past season, but I go back to the Arkansas game. He was still not 100%, so had a big game there, had a tremendous run off tackle where he went about 55 yards for a touchdown. Joe, I like Deuce McCouch. I have all year, and I think the Saints are saying, hey, we have Ricky Williams, and we can utilize this guy as a receiver, as a punt returner, kickoff hey. returner, and really um, use those multi-dimensional skills know. to our benefit. I don't know if they're saying we have Ricky Williams. Jim Haslis just sending a message out to Ricky Williams. We don't care. Go do whatever you want to do. I'm going on with my football team. That's Jim Haslis. He's great at handling guys who think they have problems. But He'll straighten them out. Wait one second. The other thing is that he, we talked about Jamal Lewis last year when the Baltimore Ravens were looking at Jamal Lewis and said, you know, he's got a nick here, he's got an injury here. Turned out to be a heck of a back. Deuce McAllister could be the same type of a back for them. Give them the pounder. Give them the versatility. Are you agree with me, Joe? I think, well, I think. I'm with a Deuce bandwagon now? Based, uh, based on Jamal's situation, I think so. I think it's a good Let, pick. Let's look at the depth chart. Let's I love the, I ahead, love the pick. Keep going. Let's look at the depth chart I love chart the fact here. that Jim Haslett said, hey, look, I'm not going to put up with Ricky Williams' baloney. Ricky Williams. Do you, do you really believe that Ricky Williams is not in the picture at running back? No, no, I think I don't look, believe you, Ricky Williams is this stupid. That's Ricky what Williams I don't has believe. been injured both his two seasons too, though. You got to remember. So you're looking at a guy in Ricky Williams who has missed games each of the seasons because of injuries. McAllister, who had some of those issues. I, Maybe between the two of them, you get a heck of a. Back. I just have. I just. I, to me, I just have trouble. Imagining somebody not being bright enough to be able to figure out what's going on. He's, He's a great football player. Yes. I mean, I'm oh, as God, mad yes. as a fan of the game of football at the actions that he has. I mean, he's really stupid. And forget about this baloney about going to play baseball. Guys have tried that. Hey, that's not the ultimate wake-up call to this, Ricky Williams. Oh, oh, yeah. I mean, what else could be a wake-up call than this? Somebody it's, rang it's the a bell. 12-alarm fire worth of yeah, wake-up call. Yeah, going on. And I take it back. Where everyone down there, I mean, in the video conference, we joined the head coach of the New Orleans Saints, uh, uh, Jim Hazlitt. And Jim, uh, good to be with you as always. Deuce McAllister, surprised he was sitting there for you? Well, we were very surprised. Obviously, uh, he's a guy that we had it rated very high on our board, up and around, I think, fifth or sixth on our board. And uh, when, he, when he fell to us, we thought, uh, you can't turn down a guy like this. It just, uh, he gives you so many weapons. A guy that can play uh, running back and go out to return punts and kickoffs. And I think he's a great pick. Okay, so now the next question, you know where we have to go. Ricky Williams. I guess it's a two-pronged question. If Ricky is in and playing the way you want him, how do you project to get them both playing time? And where does Ricky Williams stand right now in your overall plans, Jim? Well, obviously, I think this is a two-man uh, two uh, position. It, 
that you can't go wrong I like the Giants did last year with uh, Thunder and Lightning. Uh, I think this gives you some flexibility and plays you can run with them, different things. And, you know, obviously Ricky's been hurt the last couple of years, so it's nice to have a backup or, uh, or another guy that can go in and play. So, uh, like I said, I think we got two good running backs on this football team right now. Rookie healthy enough? I mean, is that not part of the equation of a question here? No, Ricky's healthy. He's coming in. He'll be in uh, this week for mini camp, and uh, we're looking forward to getting both of them together. What preconceived thoughts? It's only April, Jimmy, on uh, on your quarterback position. Jeff Blake did well, but boy, Aaron Brooks did well. Uh, where does that stand? Do you have a starter as we speak? How do you see that going before we kick it off in September? Well, I think it's the same thing. We feel good about our quarterback situation. Uh, you know, Aaron did a great job in stepping in, and, and Jeff Blake's obviously a quality veteran, and we feel good about Jake Delhomme, our third. So uh, our quarterback situation is fine. Um, you know, we feel good about that situation also at running back right now. Well, you know, Jimmy, you got to have a Cajun down there. DeLome, you know, before that 4K or A-Bear. I mean, you, I mean, you got to have some down there. Hey, isn't it nice to hear them talk football in New Orleans? I know with Mike and Ricky Williams, they were excited, you know, a year or two ago. But but, but, but is, it, is it football back? I mean, do you hear it every day in the streets in New Orleans? Well, you know, I, I know the people are excited about playing, you know, Saints football again. And our players are excited about what's going on. And uh, they're working hard right now. And they're in here every day. And... Uh, as long as we can keep up that attitude and, and the players know what how hard we worked last year to get to this point and we keep it up, uh, I think we're in pretty good shape. Yeah, and you got a good defensive line to help you out, and that's the understatement of the year. And I know that's from a guy that played in the Bermuda Triangle uh, in Buffalo. I know you appreciate the way those guys play. Thanks, uh, Jimmy. We'll see you later in the right, weekend. Chris. Thank you. I, I loved him as a player, by the way, and he oh. knows that. With him and, and, and Smurlis and Shane coach. Nelson. What a job as a coach. Well, I'm just going back 20 years. Oh, yeah. Now I'm moving forward to a coach. I mean, you can't do any better than Jim Hazlitt did last year with, with seemingly no seemingly no bullets, right? Well, yeah, but he changed. first thing he did was change the attitude, which was a big thing. But Randy Mueller, who was the executive of the year, hey, hey, he went in and signed some key free agents, and they had, you know, Darren Howard last year, second-round pick. They didn't have a first-round pick. But well, guess what? Darren Howard played like a first-round pick, so they had some players, and Jim coached them up. All right, let, let's move on. Mine, that's right. The Saints said all along that they enjoyed the luxury of picking the best available athlete, regardless of position. And with their first pick, number 23, in round number one, they did exactly that. No one expected the Saints to pick a running back in the first round. No one expected Ole Miss star Deuce McAllister to be there when the 23rd pick came up. Ricky Williams hasn't lived up to expectations on or off the field. Everyone knows that, but Jim Hazlitt insisted that the surprising choice of Deuce McAllister wasn't designed to light Ricky Williams' fire. You could say that about anybody we had left on the board. Our next guy on the board was a tight end. Well, if we'd have taken him, it's not an indictment on Cam or Dave Stahelski. The next guy into that uh, was a, a wide receiver, so it wouldn't have been an indictment on Joe Horn or, or, or Albert. It's just... We didn't really have a quote, uh, we had to have a, a certain position to start. We just took the best player available, and, and he was the number one guy on our board. Now, the Saints have just traded out of the second round. They sent that pick to Dallas for two of the Cowboys' choices in round number three, the 70th and 81st overall in the draft, so we'll have to wait some more. Right now, the Saints have only made one selection with two more to come, both of those in round number three. Rachel, of college numbers one. Ironically, Deuce McAllister wears number 22, and 22 selections were made in the first round before he finally heard his name called. Now he intends to prove that 22 mistakes were made. To the inside for the touchdown. He's been been compared to Jacksonville's Fred Taylor, to former Raider Marcus Allen. But as far as Jim Hazlitt's concerned, Deuce McAllister's combination of speed, power, receiving ability, return ability, and character make it difficult to compare him to anyone. I think he's one of those rare backs that, uh, you know, a big guy that can really get, if he gets in the backfield, that he can, he can go for a touchdown. Uh, I think he's extremely fast. He's deceivingly fast. For offensive coordinator Mike McCarthy, Deuce McAllister is the new toy that arrived on this offseason Christmas Day. McAllister fits beautifully, he says, into the Saints' concept of spreading the field. He can pair McAllister with Ricky Williams, make the defense decide whether they want to stop the run or the pass, and then attack the mismatch McAllister's versatility has created. Well, it's a clear matchup problem because now they got to make a substitution and they got to deal with him as a runner and a pass receiver. So, I mean, if you got a linebacker type that could run with them, 
then, you know, this definitely gives us an advantage. You know, we're making them put a smaller guy on the field, and it gives us the ability to run at that smaller guy or to put a bigger guy on the field to run the ball, and now we're throwing the ball. So, yeah, it's definitely an advantage. The Saints have been trying to market themselves more regionally, and in getting the Mississippi native, they figured to tap back into a Magnolia connection they had only utilized six times before, only one other time in the first round in Archie Manning. That's just icing on the cake for me as a player. I mean, because now my family and a lot of my friends and, you know, just the whole state of Mississippi, you know, can come and, come and support, you know, the Saints, and hopefully we can, we can pack the Superdome out a lot. Now, round two is just concluding. The Saints did not make a selection in round number two. They sent it to Dallas for two of Dallas's third round draft choices, 70 and 81 overall. People are estimating it'll be about another hour before the Saints make that 70th pick um, in, the, in the third round, the first of two selections that they will have. And then they'll put it to bed for the night. Tomorrow, the draft will resume with rounds four through seven, and the Saints will have a pick in every draft. Duke, Deuce McAllister will be here as well for a noon opportunity to meet and greet the press. Juan, back to you. First round pick, Deuce McAllister showed his face at the team's headquarters today, and forget the guy's injury-prone past, he was not making any uh, limping movements today at the camp. d a guy the Saints brass believes can contribute right away as the backup to Ricky Williams are in the backfield alongside him. In his first of many meetings to come with the local media, Deuce talked about his playing future in New Orleans. You know, I'm very honored and fortunate that the New Orleans Saints picked me up as a player. Uh, my job is to come in to compete for the job. That's, that's what I am, and, you know, I'm going to come in and give everything, whether it's special teams, offense, and I'm just blessed. Um, you know, I never knew that I would be around at the 23rd pick, but, you know, the Lord has the plans for us all, and I'm blessed for it. All right, once again, overall, pretty good draft for the Saints. They gave up their second-round pick to get two third-rounders, and they got some good ones in North Carolina linebacker Cedric Hodge and defensive end Kenny Smith out of Alabama. They opened today's pickings with a bull of a fullback in Terrence Moran B Morris. He's out of the University of Kansas. They went for good hands in the fifth round, picking up UC Davis receiver Onome Ojo. He's tall, six foot five, 210. Ojo was followed by Oregon State's Mitch White, an offensive tackle that does not miss any meals. Also 6'5", 308. He was the sixth round pick. And in the final round, New Orleans chose Southern Cal defensive tackle Enos Davis. Also... What do the Saints have in Deuce McAllister? Well, one reporter today in the war room actually called him the anti-Ricky when he stopped and talked to everyone in the press room addressing everyone with yes sirs and no ma'ams. Very different. He seems to show a genuine excitement about the game of football and especially about being the chosen one for the New Orleans football Saints. New Orleans meet Deuce McAllister. Off the field, he's about to graduate from Ole Miss with a degree in criminology. On the field, he's considered one of the best of the crop, running a 4-4-40 and hitting the corner, according to the scouts, like a man possessed. You know, a guy that's, that's very versatile, you know, can be an inside runner, you know, right between the tackles, but have speed enough to get to the corner and also can line up as a receiver, either in the slide or split out wide. Jim Hazlitt is hoping that Deuce will be a capable competitor in camp with Ricky this spring, hopefully pushing Williams to finally reach his potential. Then as a real payoff, there's always the offensive set that will include both Williams and McAllister in the backfield at the same time. Uh, we'll, we'll figure out how to get him in the game, whether it's at the same time, whether it's uh, single, whether we alternate him, whatever, uh, however we got to do it, we'll, they'll both get enough playing time. I mean, he's a veteran guy. He knows the ropes, and I'm going to go in and, and try to learn as much as I can from him. Another genuine motivator for Deuce is revenge. All of the prognosticators picked McAllister to be long gone by the time the Saints got on the clock at number 23 in the first round. But as it turns out, everyone else's loss, according to McAllister, is New Orleans' gain. You know, you weren't the number one pick in the draft, so there was a lot of teams that did pass you up for, you know, many different reasons for whatever they may be. So, I mean, you'll definitely thrive on it, and, you know, once it's all over, you'll look back and hopefully say, well, you know, I hope my, my sheet shows you how good of a player I really was. Of course, we'll talk later more about the competition between Rick. thought there was a chance that Deuce could get to us, believe it or not, and I think we were afraid to talk about it, but we actually did the day before go through in a couple scenarios that had Deuce coming. Like I said, once Kansas City traded the pick and, and we knew they were looking for a running back, that we thought there was a chance he would be there. Of course, all the moment, take me through yesterday. Obviously, you and your agent had talked about where you might expect it be expected to go. Uh, how soon in the first round were you thinking perhaps your name would, would be sounded? 
Well, probably um, all the indications. Um, probably the earliest third pick, you know, latest as 12. But um, once Kansas City traded their pick to St. Louis, then I knew if I hadn't got picked by 11th, then it may be eight or nine picks, you know, before I got any, any phone calls. Was it a difficult time for you? I'm sure you've got family there and all, and everybody's just hanging on every pick, and the day, day just kind of drags on. Well, I, I wouldn't say really difficult. You know, maybe frustrating to see some of the players getting picked ahead of you. I mean, but there, it, it kind of all happens in strings. I mean, because, you know, there was once a lot of the D tackles got taken, then teams kind of got start start getting scared, so they started taking a lot of defensive players, and you know it really hurt skill players, especially you know like running backs. It obviously had to be the injuries that you went through in your senior season that caused you to drop. Well, I mean, you can you can look at it in any any way you want, but um, you know this may be a blessing in disguise for myself because you go into a playoff team, and you know the lower you get picked the better the teams are, mm -hmm. and that's what you have to really realize and focus on. I mean, you, you miss out on the big signing bonus and uh, things of that nature, but, you know, I'm in an opportunity where we can be right back in the playoffs and, you know, competing for the ultimate goal anyway. And the Super Bowl being here next year, that would be a nice combination, wouldn't it? That's the ultimate goal. At any time, Deuce, did you say to yourself, gosh, I wish I'd come out after my junior year? Well, you know, it, it may have crossed my mind maybe once or twice, but I have to, you know, just be elated with the decision that I made to come back because, you know, I'm only six hours away from finishing up my, my degree. And then just the experience and the maturity that I learned from my senior season and, you know, just being around some of the guys and hanging out, you know, I, I wouldn't trade it over. Describe yourself as a running back. Kind of a slasher guy, you know, a guy that's very versatile and can split out wide on first down and be in the backfield on second and third down. So, you know, a guy that has speed to get to the corner but also can run in between the tackles. So uh, just a slash type of running back that, you know, a do-all things type of guy. Describe yourself as a person, a personality. Laid back, you know, once you get to know me, the more I talk. But at first, you know, I'm just a laid-back guy, the kind of guy who tries to listen as much as possible because that's the way you learn, you know, not saying a lot. And I'm just a person, you know, I'm just a person that just happens to play football. Miller, he's got all the time in the world up top looking for McAllister. Got it. Touchdown. you got to be pretty excited about playing behind this offensive line. Uh, yes, sir. I mean, you just look at the type of things that they've been able to do as a unit and you know I think they're a unit that, that love to see their running backs you know make plays because they get that much more aggressive and you know it just opens it up that much more, more for the passing game. All right back here with Mike McCarthy. Tells it exactly the way he sees it. Deuce McAllister does that mean that Ricky Williams after 2001 is no longer a New Orleans Saint? And I, I definitely believe that that he'll be going after this particular season. I think this pick certainly, it gives you some avenues to go by that you could go with a, a two running back set. The Packers won a Super Bowl a few years back with Raymond Harris, Darcy Leffens. The Raiders have done it over the last few years with Napoleon Kaufman and, and also Tyrone Wheatley. And they brought in Charlie Garner after Kaufman retired. You're gonna see a lot of two back sets with these two guys, but I got a feeling enough is enough. And after the 2001 season, Ricky will be elsewhere. Not only does uh, Ricky Williams make some folks in the locker room unhappy with not working out this offseason, but I think he really has crossed the line, and this is as much an ability, a message pick as much as an ability pick, right? Well, if it was a shot over the bow, you can take it like that. I mean, there's no question about it. He was the best player available. I don't think you can debate that. No question about that particular spot. And Deuce is a totally different individual than Ricky. As far as a team player, got to get along with uh, other guys on the squad, but there's no question about it that I think his, his work habits, questionable, that he hasn't come in to work with the football club, has definitely uh, uh, got some people uh, somewhat upset in this organization.